Greetings fellow adventurers, my name is Vizley Hain and welcome to the Hadex Anomaly is horrifying. Grim Dark Mysteries, Warhammer 40k lore by West Hammer. I actually, I have no idea what this means. I do not know what the Hadex Anomaly is. I've never heard this term before I think, at least not that I remember. So I'm not sure what the heck this is, but I'm looking at West Hammer's horror, like Warhammer horror playlist. I actually like, did like the whole playlist, I want to react to all of that, so... This is one of the videos in it and well let's go and see what the heck this means and what this is the about the dark galaxy of the 41st millennium is full of creepy and obscure mysteries to say the least yeah it's it, it's a thick field to the brim with all kinds of dark things themes and mysteries and yeah everything is dark and horrible strange yes. people places and objects that defy all logical explanation yes indeed Every yes we gain leaving us only with hundreds of new unanswered questions <laughs> that feels like me reacting to Warhammer lore. Every single time I see a video, I'm like, but wait, now I have a, like literally 10 times more questions than I got answers. Now I just wonder even more things. <laughs> That's exactly how it feels whenever I do this. One such mysterious region can be found in the core of Jericho's Reach. An oh, area it's something. Of space haunted by a vast crimson anomaly. Oh, it's an actual something. I thought it's maybe some kind of event that happens upon people like some kind of disease like war disease or something like that no it's some kind of giant red orb thing in, in space what the heck a blasphemous tumor upon reality that bathes the surrounding sector in arterial light and what subjects the? any foolish enough to venture too close to a whole plethora of supernatural phenomena oh that is actually so interesting because that makes you wonder what is it why is it there and what can you do to explore into it even further if it produces you know uh, paranormal like anomalies and whatever and whenever you get close to it how do you get close enough to actually explore it and see what it's about including the perverse inversion of space and time why do i feel like if there was no like restriction upon humanity's technology and we were like we, we returned back to the developments of the dark age of technology why do i feel like we would have the technology to be able to you know like figure out or explore so many more of these weird mysteries that we you know with the with the current things we have we can't really i speak of course of the haddix anomaly a phenomena that despite the exhaustive efforts of the imperium's brightest minds remains unclassifiable oh, and incomprehensible that's a actually that's a pretty damn image i love i love cryptic horror stuff like these just look at that also what is this ship it's so cozy looking you have paint like little drawings and stuff little cozy chair that looks even cozier than my chair <laughs> Now, the anomaly itself is already a perplexingly supernatural enigma, but when uh -huh. you take into account the long list of truly bizarre and downright terrifying events that can tie themselves directly back to it, it all adds up for a perfectly grimdark mystery. Tell me, what, is it? what exactly what does it do? is the Haddix exactly. anomaly? Yeah, yeah. What kind of crazy effects does it have on the people that witness it? What are some of the theories behind what it is and how it came to be? And ultimately, what does its existence mean for the future of the galaxy? Well, in this video, we're going to get to the bottom of all those mysteries and more. Yes, but let's do it. Before we get into it, a quick shout out to this video's sponsor. Damn it. Have you ever wondered if the <laughs> Sinister Six could withstand the Human Torch's supernova? Or what about if Star-Lord's dancing could distract the X-Men long enough for Ultron to finish them off? Well, now we can finally find what out the answer at? to these hotly what, debated what is questions. This? Is this Marvel versus... I don't know. Capcom or whatever it's called. Is is that what this is? What the is this? Sponsor of this video, Marvel Strike Force. Never mind. I I do not know this series. I do not know. I have no idea. Okay. I <laughs> I do not know. Marvel Strike Force is a comic book fan's dream come true, as it allows you to assemble I don't really, your dream team. You know what? Why am I even looking at this? I'm I don't care about the ad. I'm not here for the ad. I'm here for the actual video. Even the comment. So yeah, forget the ad. Oh wait. Come on. How, how much more? From across. Free to die. when you die free, be to Marvel Strike come to be known. Sponsoring okay, now this video. the actual thing that we are here for. There we go. The Haddix here we anomaly, are. As it has come yes. to be known, was first discovered by a rogue trader of the same name, Emmanuel Haddix. Wait, is that why it's named the Haddix Anomaly? Because he's the one to, who discovered it? I mean, isn't that a historical thing that so many things are named after the people who discovered them? Within the core of the Jericho Reach section of the galaxy. 
You see, for most of his life, this guy operated in the vicinity of Charadon, but at one point, the realm of his birth was invaded by the Arch Arsonist. He decided to use this as an opportunity to establish himself in a different part of the galaxy, and around this time, the warp storms that had originally engulfed the lost Jericho sector had finally broken, allowing for safe passage. This was a chance of a lifetime to be the first rogue trader operating in a potentially highly lucrative section of space. There's a big, there's a huge butt coming. There's a very huge butt coming. So he sees the moment. However, <laughs> whenever I say there's a butt coming, but they say however, <laughs> I'm like, okay, yeah, you know what? I'm, it's still a butt. However, it still means butt, basically. It's the same thing. What he encountered when his ship first broke from the warp was something that in his journals he described like a rose suspended in the firmament. It was a massive, roiling cloud of crimson energy. Damn, that looks like a face right there. Look at that. Like it's a giant screaming face right there. Wow. Like a giant bloody spot in the void. Looks like a sun tornado. He mistakenly thought this thing was a nebula, and always an egotistical man, he named it after himself. Now, <laughs> of course. Up until this point, the records that he kept of his day-to-day -day life were not really anything particularly out of the ordinary. It may be a couple of activities here or there that bordered on heretical, but what uh, What rogue trader doesn't do that, right? Rogue trader worth their salt didn't get up to a little mischief now and again. Exa exactly, However, exactly. It was shortly after he arrived that something started to change. He became obsessed with the anomaly and claimed that when he was staring at it, its roiling energies would actually react to his thoughts as if it could understand him and was trying to communicate. Damn, what is this? An another theory about, you know, some kind of fragmented god or something like that being this thing? Is that what it's gonna be? <laughs> if, like, whenever it comes to these weird anomalies, you keep thinking, in a universe like this, what the heck, like, how many living things are there that, you know, you would think are just nothing, just some, like, you know, like, random space events or warp events, and there ends up being some kind of weird you know, stuff happening from them that makes you think, oh, wait, they're actually sentient. What the heck? And over time, it eventually wormed its way into his mind, and the rogue trader claimed that he had full-blown conversations with it in his dreams. But at the same time, it makes you wonder, what if it's actually just some kind of space radiation, some kind of space, um, I don't know, some kind of, like, actual, like, you know, supernatural event, but it's, you, it makes you, just because of the effects of it, it makes you think that you're having conversations, but you're actually just insane in reality. You're just going he crazy. He this overwhelming compulsion to get closer to it. He actually, that's the biggest thing about many situations like this, that uh, sometimes, what if it's just some stuff like that, just people going crazy because of their energies or whatever, and they are not actually really sentient. ...needed to understand what this thing truly was, and so the order was given, and his fleet pressed forward. However, his crew did not share his enthusiasm, as the records that they kept showed a mounting sense of fear and dread. You are literally going into some right, like giant red storm in space. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I kind of can see why they would not be very excited about that. They recorded all manner of strange phenomena, odd jumps in times, entire days missing from the ship's log recorder, and even transmissions from other ships in the fleet arriving before they had even been sent. Oh, some kind of time and space anomaly? The voyage was ultimately doomed. Those, those are always freaky and weird. For failure, as mutiny eventually ensued. It started with a single ship that refused to press any further, and when it turned to retreat, the mad captain ordered the macro batteries of all of the other ships to fire upon it. After but I mean, like, why? You're just losing those for no reason. Just let them go. If you're going to destroy them anyway, might as well just let them go, right? You're not losing anything if they go, but you lose something if you destroy them anyway. I mean, even if you lose them if they do go, why even waste the ammunition to destroy them, right? Might as well just let them go at that point. Unless it's something about salvaging them to get their resources back so they don't just run away with them. I don't know. Anyway, Mad Captain, everything crazy, weird. Weird supernatural storm thing, the whatever. Ship's destruction, the fleet was split between those who saw this as their last remaining opportunity to flee with their lives, while Play, the others you were bound by debts of loyalty. This is where his logs end, so we don't really know exactly what went down. 
Wait, did he die? They, they find the remains of the ships or did nothing more at some point? But the captain's ship was eventually discovered in 779 M41 found drifting on the outer edge of a vast circle of other seemingly abandoned vessels orbiting the anomaly. Aboard the ship and frozen in time was a scene of chaos and violence where the crew tore each other apart. The captain was found barricaded within the bridge seated upon his command throne. A wicked smile played across his face and the red flicker of the Haddock's anomaly reflecting in his time frozen eyes. Wait, you mean I, oh. Wait, wait a second. Whenever he said time frozen, I thought they just he just meant something like, oh, they found their skeletons in these positions that, you know, say this and that about what happened. You're telling me it was actually really them frozen in time or something? What? When it comes to the rest of Haddock's fleet, each and every one of the four other ships suffered a suspiciously unique tragedy. Now, even though they'd escaped the Mad Captain's wrath, they had damned themselves the moment they entered this blighted region of space. Imagine if it's actually just a portal to the warp, like to the, you know, a bad space, a bad place of the warp, and that's all it is. Imagine the head. And the anomaly's curse followed them into the stars. The Hippostrom was lost shortly after in a violent warp storm, re-emerging sometime later as a feral predator, crewed by demented madmen that preyed upon shipping lanes. The Weeping Amiralis was destroyed by Xenos raiders, and the captured crew were believed to have gone on to form the slave cult of the Carmine Lamentation. The Ilium of Char- what? What's with these names and cults and everything? What the heck? Hand, ...disappeared into the warp for many years, before reappearing once again as a derelict space hulk in 779 M41. However- Isn't that the name of- Um. <coughs> Isn't that the name of one of the games? Uh, Warhammer- No, it's, uh... Space? Death Wings? Space Wing? I forgot something. Death Hulks? Space Hulk, some, I forgot, but one of the games has something like, that sounds like that in their name. However, when the Death Watch boarded the vessel to investigate, the warp engine suddenly flared to life, disappearing back into the Immaterium, the members of the kill team never being seen again. However, the massive mining vessel known as the Dracaena perhaps suffered the most mysterious fate of all. Her wreck was discovered on a rogue moon found adrift at the edge of the Haddock's anomaly, but this was no ordinary crash site. In fact, it seemed like the ship had been surgically dismembered, each piece being distributed equally spaced across the moon's surface, covering an area of some eight square leagues. They were also, you're telling me it looks like, like, uh, like it crashed, but it's way too even and, you know, spread in a way like this, they cut apart and spread in a way that is too even to be just random. It's like it was placed or something were set in a very meticulous order and resembled cogs of a giant clock. Perhaps even more disturbing was the fact that the remains of all 15,000 crewmen were also discovered. Their bodies had been arranged in neat rows, all their organs laying out in the dust beside them and configured like a surgeon's anatomical chart. Impo okay, what the heck? Possibly, despite the many years that had passed, their flesh showed no signs of decomposition. I love how we are talking we are talking about that, but we're showing skeletons on the screen just for the sake of being cryptic and creepy. What unknown force could have been powerful enough to dismantle such a massive ship in this way, but also delicate enough to do the same with so many bodies? Yeah, that you know, doing that, just killing everything and spreading, you know, yeah, killing them violently and putting them on the random moon. That's not the weird part. I feel like there could be any kind of entities or demons or things hidden in so many weird locations and warp storms and nonsense and portals and out there. there's so much potential. But the fact that there's so much precision, like surgical precision to the whole like situation, that is indeed really the very weird part about it. Like, why would anything or anybody do that? What is the point? It's like some sick ritual. It would be kind of weird if it's actually just some kind of space cult and they just did that for some kind of reason, like, uh, you know, some kind of weird cult is a reason and nothing more, just some, like, ritual of their cult. And perhaps the more mysterious and unnerving question. For but at the same time, it might be some kind of creature with a higher meaning in all of these, which we don't understand. For what sinister purpose was the vessel and her crew sacrificed? 
Many years have passed, and despite exhaustive efforts by the collective scholars of the Imperium, the Haddock's anomaly proves to be a mystery that defies all logical explanation and attempts at classification. Uh, the vast sense. majority of expeditions that have set out to study it have been met with unprecedented disaster. Second, the scholars believe that they may have made some kind of headway into unlocking its secrets. The anomaly twists and contorts into a somehow even more strange and esoteric form. It is described as a wound in reality, a cancer upon the region, a monstrous heart palpitating in the void that expands and recedes arrhythmically. Oh, it does? I, actually, that's the one thing I was just going to ask right now. I was just going to ask, like... Is it, does it expand or does it just stay the same size the whole time? Does it do anything special? Does it just stand there? Absorbing Is there something? entire star systems with every breath that it takes. Any star caught in its expanding roiling energy becomes a clotted red orb that mimics the anomaly itself. Around its perimeter exist a veritable army of ghost vessels, ships that seem to have been locked within a tide of chronal disturbances, frozen with no hope of escape. However, Damn. this is not to say that we haven't learned anything about it, but those few truths that the Imperium has managed to gleam have only served to deepen the anomaly's mystery. Now, based on the time-distorting projections the anomaly creates, impossibly, it seems as if this thing serves as a conduit that is leaking time itself into the galaxy from another dimension. One of the strangest things of all about the anomaly is that on multiple occasions, it has been documented as actually having moved to a different region of Jericho's reach, as if it is somehow sentient. And oh, there we, go. there we go with the sentient thing again. So it might actually just really be sentient. Able to crawl its way across the void to better spread its corrupting influence. It's true that the anomaly poses a danger to anyone that would draw near it, but potentially those that are most affected by it are Imperial navigators and astropaths. With the navigators, it's because the anomaly somehow is able to mimic the light of the Astronomicon perfectly, and making warp travel anywhere near it next to Oh, oh, is that why there's so many ships orbiting it? Because they got tricked that it was, the, you know, basically the Astronomicon, and they went, you know, they used it as the, you know, to, 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 you know as the beacon, and they went to it, and they ended up, you know, being caught in all of that nonsense and stuff, and yeah to impossible. Many of them that have attempted to sail the void in its vicinity have been driven into a state of irreparable madness and corruption. Over time, many Damn, it's like they're... <laughs> it's like they discovered TikTok. Many of these individuals would come together and form a cult known as the Cyclopean Congregation, a what? renegade institution of heretical navigators and other voidfarers that worship the anomaly and seek to unlock its mysteries. As they are capable of using the anomaly as a guide instead of the Astronomicon, the cult is able to safely navigate through Jericho's reach. But even more impressively, the warp here seems to favor their unholy mission. Actually, the thing is, I was going to say there's no way that at least some people at some point did not make some kind of cult about the, the whole thing because they always, humanity always does that whenever it finds a weird thing. At least a number of people are always going to turn to, you know, that when it comes to them. And, of course, somebody did that, and, I mean, it's, they always find clever ways to go about it, so I'm not surprised that they, you know, they're using it, like, the Astronomicon to maneuver around the region and stuff. As when they set off for a journey that should take weeks or months to complete. So, yeah, it's kind of weird that they're being favored. Like, huh? Is it really sentient and really actually accepting the worship and give, like, giving benefits or something, or what is happening? They often arrive at their destination seemingly instantaneously. The cult foretells of a coming age of chaos and despair, of a time when the light of the Astronomicon will be snuffed out. It is, in, it is inevitable, it will happen someday. Leaving the unbelievers scrambling in the abyssal dark. The cult preaches that the only hope of salvation comes from the anomaly, that it will replace the old as a new guiding crimson light that will grow to such an extent that it sheds its blood red radiance across every star throughout the Milky Way. Those who debase themselves before its unholy splendor will be the masters of this new age. Astropaths operating within Jericho's- You know, at this point, there's so many weird things in Warhammer. There's like a, a, a thousand weird things that can, you know, pose a threat to the entire universe. Can we chill? Can, can we just relax for a moment? <laughs> can we have a moment of peace without something weird happening that wants to, you know, 
cause problems for everybody. ...are subjected to a particularly disturbing phenomena that emanates from the region's most infamous ghost ship. The Curse of the Limitless Grass. Grass. A cursed ship doomed to relive its tragic destruction over and over. Witnesses huh? who have seen the phenomena firsthand tell... Huh? ...of an elegant merchant void ship, its hull a masterwork of illustrious silver and gleaming brass that, without warning, translates from the warp into the open void. Shortly after it appears, it begins to broadcast on all frequencies, telling its tragic tale to anything and anyone that's willing to listen. The broadcast always tragic starts tale. the same. The ship identifies itself by name and says that it's a free trader under the command of Chartist Captain Olympia. The ghostly voices then proceed to ask for permission to enter the orbit of a planet named Veronis, which, quite frankly, is a world that simply doesn't exist. One that there is no record of and doesn't appear on any of the charts in Jericho's Reach. Oh, that's actually so weird. Yeah. Oh, I feel whenever there, whenever there's weird parts that make no sense, but are so weird, they like creepy. I get chills and I love it. I love it. But the voices seem to indicate that it should be right there. After this, the broadcast cuts out for a few minutes before a woman's voice can be heard requesting an audience with someone named the Pharaonic Eminence, the Sanguine Oligarch. There's another period of silence, but... What the heck? Sanguine Oligarch? What is that? I don't even know what that word means, the second one. What the? That sounds like a vampire. <laughs> when the broadcast comes back on again, it synchronizes with the anomaly itself. It emits a burst of baleful crimson energy that saturates everything in the surrounding area. The broadcast is filled with utter chaos, gut-wrenching screams of abject horror as the crew bears witness to a horrifying celestial phenomena consuming a planet that only they can see. What if the planet was there, but it was consumed by the, you know, by the anomaly and that's why it's not there anymore? But I mean, if it's a vessel, how long ago could that have been? Like, what is this, a vessel, like, for, from the time before? You know, before, the, like, the Great Crusade, before even the time of technology, like, the dark, the, I mean, the dark age of technology or something? Or what is this? How old is it? The ship, which up until this point is always just floating in the void, suddenly has its engines flare to life and banks hard as if trying to avoid incoming catastrophe. And then, without fail, during each and every one of its ghostly appearances, the limitless grasp is ripped apart, as if by the hands of an invisible, wrathful giant. What makes the manifestations of this ship so particularly dangerous is the secondary phenomena known as the Lamentation Wave. The Lamentation Wave! In the ship's wave. final moments, its chief astropath managed to transmit a single message, a cry of abject terror and pain that echoed out far and wide across the warp. Although harmless to you or I, other astropaths who come into contact with the signal are overwhelmed by the final agonized thoughts of their dying counterpart, his words surging through and overloading their minds. Some are driven irreparably insane, whereas others take their own lives rather than continue. Wow, they just killed themselves. Wow. They exist in a galaxy where they risk intercepting that terrifying signal once again in some future expedition. Weeks may pass, or maybe months, or sometimes years, but without fail, the limitless grasp always appears again. So it just keeps happening. The ship just appears normal, like looking normal, everything is normal, the same thing happens, and then it, you know, it gets destroyed, and then again, the same thing. Wow. In the exact same location, always in the exact same moment in time, before her crew died screaming in the void. Records indicate that although Rogue Trader Haddix was the first to document the anomaly's existence, he had not actually been the first to witness it. That actually, I did not even think that he was the first, because why would he be the first if it was there for who knows how long, right? Like, why would he be the first one? I mean, it's not indicated that, you know, it's not, nothing is indicated, but at the same time, it would be weird for it to just be that big. And be found for the first time by this guy, it just doesn't make sense, As right? As it was believed to have first manifested in 656 M40, where in the exact same moment it came into existence, it was somehow visible all the way across the Ultima Segmentum. And this shouldn't have been possible. Light doesn't travel instantaneously. 
but its violent birth was witnessed by untold oh, billions. No one knows oh. how the anomaly was created, but there are several theories. One account links it back to a decadent and corrupted hive world that, if its records are to be believed, the corrupted lords of this world had begun to dabble in forbidden blood rites, their fell sorcery serving as the catalyst for the anomaly's birth. Imperial astrologers on I mean, could humans really do something like that? I feel like may maybe that's a bit far like, stretched. I don't know. On the other hand, Farfetched, I mean. claimed that the anomaly was the result of a particularly profane galactic alignment that saw a confluence of forces rip the void in half. The final theory that carries any form of weight comes from the psychically gifted individuals that have attempted its study and, in return for their effort, were granted maddening visions. Those who remain sane enough to speak share a warning that the anomaly served only as a precursor to a far more terrifying galactic event that would see the entirety of Jericho's reach destroyed before spreading out into the rest of the galaxy. And needless to say, the area surrounding the anomaly is incredibly dangerous and restricted to ships of only the highest clearance, such as those belonging to the Inquisition and the Death Watch. Even still, this- I heard the name Death Watch before. But I, don't, I do not know what the, the Death Watch actually is. I'm kind of curious. What is the Death Watch? Hasn't prevented. I should look. Maybe I should watch a lore about that. That sounds interesting. Did a whole host of rogue traders from infiltrating the region, hoping to strike it rich, excavating the lost ships frozen in its orbit. However, none have ever returned. Yeah, you know what? There's a reason why all of those ships are destroyed there, buddies. You think you're better than them to be able to go there and just, you know, salvage them and not come back like them? Well, that's I mean, that's pretty much on you at that point, right? Like, if there's no records of any returning, you should assume that maybe it's really just for the best to not go there. No matter how much you need of money you are. We may never know the true nature of the Haddix anomaly, what it is, how it was created, or what its existence ultimately means for our galaxy. Is it simply yeah. a new form of warp rift, a portal to a different dimension, or some form of interdimensional sentient being that has malevolent intentions for our universe? What do you think oh. it could be? I think... Personally, maybe it's... I, I, don't, I do not know. Uh, what, could, what could it be? If it was sentient, why would it be like, some, like that weird, you know space-time anomaly thing you know like rift thingy why would it be that and do some of the thing it's doing maybe it's not actually what if it's actually not sentient but there's something controlling it or inside of it that operates within it that is actually the thing making those weird things happen that you know we talked about so far um at the same time if it is sentient why would it be doing some of the things in the way it's doing? Like, you know, the whole thing with that one ship just, you know, suffering the same fate over and over again. While some, like, so many uptake others are just destroyed and just, you know, gravitating around the whole thing. There's some weird questions that I don't understand. That's why I'm thinking that maybe it's not sentient. I, like, and there's just something either controlling it or either it's just following some kind of precept that, you know, it was meant to do or it was like just naturally born into or something is making it do it or something i don't know that, okay that's at least what i let think let me know all of your crazy theories down in the comment section below and be sure to tell me if you know of any other spooky grimdark mysteries from warhammer 40k Spoopy. that you'd love to hear me talk about anyway oh look at that is that's wow. all i had to say about this particular subject big thanks to everyone who supports the work that i do okay well that's it i guess in that case Damn, I just love these more like creepy videos. I'm gonna watch more of them. So, yeah, I'm. I think I pretty much said what I wanted to say. You know about what I think about this whole thing. So, thank you for watching this video. And if you enjoyed watching it, punch the like button with everything you have, and have a great day or night. But for now, farewell and bye bye.